Hey, 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 what's happening, YouTubers? What's happening, Instagrammers? Sorry for the delay, but today on Way Back Wednesday, I'll be giving you my review on The Wiz, The Wizard of Oz. Not that Wizard of Oz, The Wiz from 1978. Before I begin, if you are new to this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment on the section below, and most importantly, watch. And if you're watching this on Instagram, same thing. Like, follow me, share it on your story with your friends and family so that they can see me and so that those numbers can rise. But most importantly, on YouTube, let's start. He's on down the road. He's on down the road. When Harlem school teacher Dorothy Gale tries to save her dog from a storm, she miraculously gets whisked away to an urban fantasy land called Oz. The key word is urban. After accidentally killing the Wicked Witch of the East, East Side Witch, upon her arrival, Dorothy is told by the Wiz, Richard Pryor, a wizard who can help her get back to Manhattan. Manhattan for Dorothy Gale. As Dorothy goes in search of the Wiz, She's joined by Scarecrow, Michael Jackson, the Tin Man, Nipsey Russell, and the Cowardly Lion, Ted Ross. The only thing that is better than having to witness the remake of an original classic is to see that remake take on a fresh style. That's the whole point of a remake. Your remake is not really supposed to evoke every little thing. You know, I'll get to a movie at some point down the line like that. You know what I'm talking about when I see it. You know it when you'll see it. While The Wizard of Oz felt like a fairy tale in a whole lot of ways, The Wiz treats itself more like a stage play with an, American, with an African-American twist on everything, including living in an industrial dystopia, even if the people act utopian. Even to the point where you've had all these other stage plays adapt from The Wiz, like they've made up their own version of The Wiz. Like even even like a couple years ago, I think it was 2017, the NBC The Wiz Live, that was one of the best stage plays I've ever seen. Anyway, the concept is not all that different from the original, but it does not even try to be like The Wizard of Oz. And that is both a good thing and a bad thing. The advantage here is that The Wiz can get presented as its own film and not appeal as a shadow to a timeless classic, like something that's trying to be like what was already there. For example, their respective Yellow Brick Road, they don't just simply sing, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. They don't sing those lyrics, but just add tunes to it. They make up a whole different song. Like, come on, it's on down, it's on down the road. Mm -hmm. It's on down, it's on down the road. Don't you care who's watching when you, it's on down, it's on down the road. But see, the song uses different lyrics and has Motown tunes in order to set it apart decade-wise. This is the 70s, so of course it would be Motown because it's Michael Jackson. It depends on whether you like The Wizard now. It depends on if you like the original Wizard of Oz or not. But the essence of The Wiz does not possess that same one-of-a-kind charm that the Judy Garland iteration possesses. I'm sorry, y'all. I just get... I just get emotional when I mention or think about Judy Garland because I it wasn't about long too too long after ago after I was watching and reviewing The Wizard of Oz that I was uh, researching all the dark truth behind it and you know I I can't talk about it I can't talk about it although the atmosphere that The Wiz brings is special and new it can never replicate the sense of escape that The Wizard of Oz inputs. The world of Oz, also like the actual city itself, the location, is not as polished or does not look as fantastical. It looks like a post-apocalyptic landscape, okay? As the original tech, it doesn't look as great as the original Technicolor setting. And I'm not just talking about Emerald City. Yes, the Emerald City in this movie, which is essentially a New York City with green lights everywhere. It, that is bright. That is vibrant too. But everything looks so radical. Like, nevertheless... The approach of the narrative basically shoehorns some Soul Train vibes in the mix with the aesthetic, the characters, and the music. To make it easy for y'all in this section talking about the characters, I'm simply going to compare and contrast the different versions of these characters. Hey, but for future reference, whether I do this or not, I may I may analyze the characters sections when I whenever I talk about a reboot to anything. Who knows? But Diana Ross's Dorothy Gale is exactly the opposite of the iconic diva in real life in that time. She is timid, isolated, and is not sure what she wants to be, who she wants to be. Judy Garland's portrayal 
Here we go again. All right, sorry, y'all. Uh, Judy Garland's portrayal of Dorothy Gale is somebody who fantasizes about the joys over the rainbow. But let me say something. For a movie that talks about the joys over the rainbow, there sure was a lot of black and white making that movie, bro. But nevertheless, it was still a great timeless classic. But Diana's iteration inherently get, gets mixed in the same scenarios, like getting swept away in the wind. It's not like because she wanted to explore the wonders of the other side, she wanted to get swept in this world, but it was for a different reason. Now, the performances of Michael Jackson, Nipsey Russell, and Ted Ross as their respective characters come just as iconic as Ray Bulger, Jack Haley, and Burt Lars portrayals as the Scarecrow, Tin Man, and the Lion. But the worst part about each of their journeys is that it does not pay off. Like, it, it, it said at the end that I cannot, like Richard Pryor said, well, I can't give you anything. I can't give you any, I can't give you the heart. I can't give you the brand. I can't give you the, the courage. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, Scarecrow doesn't get his brains. Tin Man doesn't get his heart. And Lion doesn't get any courage. However, this is justified by the fact that each of them use their premature desires in a few selective moments throughout the film. Like how Scarecrow would use his brains to find the yellow brick road in spite of the taxi cabs, the big, thick taxi cabs right in front of you. Tin Man was also was able to have heart for his peers with an empty chest. And Lion shows courage during the subway assault by the Lantern Puppets. Now, fun fact, did you know that subway that they were in in The Wiz was actually the same subway they used for bad? Psych. Of course it wasn't. That was 1978. Evelyn or Eveline, based off of how you want to describe it, the West, West Side Witch. West Side Witch is played by Maple King from What's Happening. And her slaves who make sweat, who manufacture sweat, don't show up until the very end, like towards the end. They have very messy and ragtag appearances, but she never poses herself as a threat until she wants to catch Dorothy. Although she was mentioned in the opening act, in like the first act of the film, but she was never brought up again or never seen until coming to the very end. <clears throat> On the other end, Margaret Hamilton's iconic portrayal of the Wicked Witch of the West was dedicated to getting her hands on the ruby slippers throughout the minute Throughout the film, from the minute they faded from her sister's feet onto Dorothy's feet. Glinda is also dealt with the same way. The original Glinda appears like a fairy godmother who guides her and tells her what to do throughout. But Lena Horne's take is somebody who brought the twister towards Dorothy. Like, she literally had the twister in her hand. She brought the twister. She brought it into this world of Oz. And I don't think that was any... So, and I think that's more of a fantasy type of way to bring somebody into the world instead of... Just, oh, it just naturally happened on its own. Like, this tornado came by, it swept me up, and I just happened to come into this colorful land of Oz. But, like I said, she is somebody who brought the twister towards Dorothy and set her up to go on this adventure with Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Lion. Richard Pryor's Wizard, Wizard of Oz exposes himself too early on <laughs> and as just a man behind the curtains. <laughs> and this makes it very underwhelming. <laughs> 42% of Rotten Tomatoes critics recommend The Wiz. The Wiz is a movie that takes an all-time classic that can never be replaced. It experiments it with a different taste and a different culture and a different race than what we are used to. And the results are very mixed. Like everybody of different races loves The Wiz just as much as we love The Wizard of Oz. Like I think no matter what color you are, it has nothing to do with color or race. You can love The Wizard of Oz. You have the right to love The Wizard of Oz. But you also have the right to love The Wiz. But just because The Wiz is predominantly African-American and it has a whole different tone to it and the culture and the atmosphere is very different doesn't mean that like if you're not black, if you're white or any other different race, that you can't love The Wiz just as like just like how you love The Wizard of Oz. Like I said, it all depends on how you feel about the original. But the pacing of the story feels slow. The set designs are radically made. The character arcs are wasted opportunities with good excuses and the soul of the music ages well. I will give it 7.3 SOs out of 10.
So that is my view on the Wiz. You can let me know what you guys think of it in the comment section below. Do you like it better than the Wizard of Oz? Or can the Wizard of Oz always be there to stay for you? But I'll see you guys next week with my next couple of videos. It's on down, it's on down the road. It's on down, it's on down the road.